This is a new RP2040 board from Adafruit called the KB2040 and we will be reviewing this board today. You might recognise it as being quite similar to another board we have reviewed previously on this channel, the SparkFun Pro Micro, but we will get into that later. So welcome to a Learn Embedded Systems microcontroller review. We try and review each new RP2040 base board that comes out. So if you are interested, then make sure you are subscribed to keep up to date. In terms of price, this board is available on Adafruit's website for $8.95. And for me, the shipping from Adafruit in the US to the UK took about a week and cost around $15. So for those like me in the UK, it will probably be worth waiting for retailers like the Pie Hut or Pie Maroney, for example, to stock these boards locally in order for these boards to make some value sense. And that will be the same probably for most non-US people wanting this board. The board does come with header pins if you want to solder them on yourself, which is always nice um, as they're, they're on hand and you don't have to go searching for some in a drawer somewhere or, or anything like that. Adafruit proposed this board as a keyboard driver, which is the controller that basically runs a keyboard by detecting keystrokes, interpreting them, and sorting out the sort of the USB device interface. And Adafruit says this board, with its 20 GPIO pins available, 18 on the board and two via the quick connector, or sorry, the Stemma QT connector, is suitable for up to 100 key matrices or common 65% 5x15 layouts. SparkFun, on the other hand, market this form factor board in the form of their Pro Micro to be a more general purpose board. Of course, the Adafruit KB2040 can be used for many more projects than just a keyboard. In terms of dimensions, this board comes in at 33 by 178 millimeters, making it quite compact. And this is the same size as the Pro Micro RP2040 from SparkFun. The KB2040 is powered, of course, by the RP2040 chip. The RP2040 chip was designed by the Raspberry Pi Foundation, and we have featured this chip pretty heavily on this channel. But for those unfamiliar, let's go over its key specs. The RP2040 is a dual core ARM Cortex M0 Plus running stock at 133 MHz. It has 264 kilobytes of SRAM, two SPI, I2C and UART controllers, and it also has four analog to digital converters. It has eight PIO state machines, USB 1.1 host and device support, which is very helpful for this uh, keyboard focused board, as well as 16 PWM channels. On this board, there is eight megabytes of flash memory, which should be enough for most projects, but if you do feel like you need the full 16 megabytes of flash that is supported by the RP2040 chip, then you may be more interested in the SparkFun Pro Micro RP2040, which has 16 megs of onboard flash. In terms of LEDs on this board, there are two, a green power indicator LED and an RGB NeoPixel. In terms of power delivery, there is a 3.3 volt regulator with up to 500 milliamps peak current output, which should be plenty for most projects. But if you do need more power, there is an alternative method using this board I will touch on later. Finally, there are two buttons, a boot select and a reset button. You can hold down the boot select button and quickly press the reset button to load up the bootloader to copy paste code across. There's no need to unplug it and plug it back in using the USB like the you would with the Raspberry Pi Pico. Programming this board is the same as any RP2040 board, and you can use the VS Code workflow I show in the video in the cards above. You just have to pay attention to sort of the pin numbering, um, which I'll cover, which I'll, I will have the pin out uh, later on in this video. Actually, let's go over the pin out now. Firstly, the board has a USB-C connector, which is a good choice from Adafruit, especially if this board is going to be the center of a keyboard. Uh, I don't think micro USB would have been well received at all in this use case. 
In terms of power pins, there is a 3 volt pin which can provide up to 500 milliamp regulated output from the onboard regulator. And there is also a raw pin which is for powering 5 volt devices like NeoPixels. By default, this pin is after a 500 milliamp fuse um, and protection diode, meaning that you can get maximum about 500 milliamps to this pin before that fuse will blow. However, you can connect directly to the USB power pin and achieve up to two amps from this pin if you solder the jumper on the, bot on the back of the board closed, and that lets you bypass the fuse and the protection diode, uh, which can give you up to two amps from the USB ports. There is a reset pin, which when grounded will reset the RP2040 chip, and that has the same effect as the, uh, the reset button on the board. And we have three ground pins. There are four analog pins, and most of the rest of the pins are standard configurable digital GPIO pins. There is a Stemma QT connector for connecting extra I2C devices and breakouts without having to solder anything together. And finally, there are two specific differential USB pins, D plus and D minus, for connecting to an external USB connector if you wanted that in a different location to the USB-C connector on the board. I should note that the pins are castellated and this is a single-sided board, making it really helpful if you want to use this, uh, if you want to solder this board directly onto a PCB, which you might do in the case of a keyboard. So in terms of conclusions and thoughts, I like this Adafruit board. I think, um, it compares to a little bit in price to the Itsy Bitsy RP2040 as well from Adafruit's RP2040 lineup, but I think this board has um, is is more compelling because it's very similar in many ways in many of its features, but it has castellated pins, very similar form factor, and a USB-C connector. Um, to be honest, I'm not a massive custom mechanical keyboard kind of person. But having seen the uses that Adafruit have proposed for this board, I'm actually considering making a custom keyboard, or at least a keypad, with this board in the future. Let me know if you'd be interested in seeing that. And perhaps this, <laughs> this, this tactic is a long-term game from Adafruit to try and sell me some more switches or something along those lines. However, for most projects, I think this board trades blows with the SparkFun Pro Micro RP2040, which costs about a dollar or so more than the KB2040. And for this extra dollar, you get 16 megs of RAM instead of eight in the KB2040. And pretty much everything else is the same. I suppose you can really take your pick between the two. I personally think that this board is a good form factor for the RP2040 chip, uh, has a good pinout and plenty of features, and can be used in a wide variety of projects, not just a keyboard. So don't be fooled by Adafruit's marketing. Overall, I think that this board is a good choice for any space constrained projects that you have. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you found this video interesting. Let us know what you think of the KB2040 down in the comments below and if you might use it yourself. Please like the video if you enjoyed it and consider subscribing for more. Thank you and as always, have a nice day.